Hi, it's Katrina. From a newly discovered species to lost Greek fortresses, here are 11 surprising underwater discoveries. Number 11. Underwater Crop Circles Take a look at these strange circular formations that occasionally pop up on the ocean floor. A group of divers first noticed these odd patterns in 1995, and their origin eluded both scientists and divers for about a decade. And then, more and more just kept popping up. No one could see who was making them, and they came to be known as underwater crop circles. Was it some sort of new sea creature? Or maybe some strange geological feature occurring below the ground? Aliens? Nobody knew. But finally, the explanation is out. It turns out that these patterns are the work of pufferfish love. The newly discovered species of pufferfish has a very elaborate mating dance, where the males flap their fins as they swim along the sandy bottom, creating these circular patterns. The fish are only about 5 inches long, but the formations are huge, about 7 feet in diameter. That's a pretty impressive art project for such a tiny creature. They were finally caught on video proving who made the circles. Once the male makes it, the female will come and inspect it, and if she likes it, she will stay and lay eggs in the center of the circle. So much work goes into these circles, and they have several complex geometric shapes that really surprise scientists. Number 10. Chuuk Lagoon Located in the Central Pacific at the bottom of Chuuk Lagoon in the Federated States of Micronesia sits an eerie graveyard containing a ghost fleet of World War II-era Imperial Japanese ships and aircrafts. The vehicle sank in February 1944 during Operation Hailstorm, a massive U.S. Navy air and sea attack against the Imperial Japanese Navy, which destroyed 45 marine vessels and 270 planes. Japan first forged a friendship with Micronesia during the late 19th century, when Japanese sailors were first welcomed there. After World War I, the League of Nations revoked Germany's possession of the region and handed jurisdiction over to Japan, which thereafter turned the islands into a fortified stronghold. The submerged graveyard in Chuuk Lagoon, known by divers as Truck Lagoon, is now a popular diving site, where even the most experienced explorers occasionally spot things they've never seen before even after a dozen or more trips there. Everyday items such as medicine bottles, plates, and shoes are scattered among the wrecks, along with military artifacts including tanks, battery guns, gas masks, and ammunition. Number 9. Hellenistic Fortress A Hellenistic fortress was recently discovered on Cape Tirosa off Bulgaria's Black Sea coast, leading researchers to believe that they have found an important site with the potential to offer a valuable glimpse into Greek life thousands of years ago. Measuring around 8,611 square feet, the fortress had a protective stone wall and was surrounded by a large 4-foot-deep, 12-foot-wide moat. Numerous artifacts were found on a nearby headland, including 260 ceramic fragments, 40% of which were Thracian-made, originating from the East Balkans. Other fragments, including pieces of amphorae, were traced back to the Aegean island of Kos, as well as the Hellenistic center of Pergamum, located in modern-day Turkey. While carbon dating is impossible due to the absence of organic matter at the site, experts were able to gauge the fortress and artifacts' age based on their style, estimating that they dated back to the 1st or 2nd century BC. Items from as recent as the 4th to 6th centuries AD were also found, indicating that the site was used for a lengthy time period. The fortress was likely one of several that lined Cape Chirosa, comprising a well-planned defensive network, and the ruins also indicate that there may have been a religious sanctuary at the site. Both types of buildings were common in the classical world, but the recent discovery helps archaeologists understand the full extent of the Greek Empire's reach and its preparedness for battle. Number 8. Pre-Continent II between 1962 and 1965, French explorer and oceanography pioneer Jacques Cousteau wanted to see if divers could live at the bottom of the sea for long periods of time. Financed by the oil industry, Cousteau's project, named Precontinent, after the French term for a continental shelf, was meant to demonstrate that humans could live in submerged habitats for weeks to further underwater exploration and research at a faster pace. The first of the underwater so-called villages, Precontinent 1, was located in the Balearic Sea off Marseille, France, 36 feet beneath the water surface. It was equipped with modern conveniences such as a radio, telephones, 
television, library, bed, record player, and video surveillance system. It was an experiment where two divers lived there for two weeks. Precontinent 2 was launched in 1963 to take the idea even further, roughly 22 miles from Port Sudan. There is a reef with a lagoon where the supply ships could anchor. The structure was sunk to the bottom and fixed with lead and cables. Called the Starfish House, an eight-member crew lived there with bunk beds, tables, chairs, a bathroom, and technical equipment and instruments. Also implemented at the site was the submersible cabin, a smaller structure that housed two divers for a week at a time. 25 other divers went back and forth, performing various duties like cleaning the structures and cooking, etc. Out of six planned pre-continent missions, only three came to fruition, and most of the evidence that they ever existed has disappeared. The only remaining structures, including a hangar called the Sea Urchin, are left over from pre-continent 2. The site's main buildings were dismantled long ago, as were the buildings at the other pre-continent locations, but there are some remains left over, including a structure with portholes and shark cages covered with coral. Number 7. Ancient Chicken Egg in 2016, scientists excavating a watery pit that once served as a wishing well in Buckinghamshire, England, discovered a 1,700-year-old chicken egg. It's one of four eggs found within the pit, but is the only one that was retrieved without breaking, making it the only complete egg dating back to Roman-era Britain. The three that broke made for an especially smelly and gross experience, releasing what was later described as a putrid stench. Archaeologists also uncovered other rare artifacts, including leather shoes, wooden tools, and a basket made from oak and willow. From the 3rd century onward, people threw items into the pit for good luck, like a wishing well, Oxford Archaeology, the company in charge of the dig, told the BBC. They speculated that the eggs may have been a food offering thrown into the pit during a funeral. Experts announced the discoveries three years later in 2019, when Oxford Archaeology published a book describing the artifacts in the well and at the nearby Roman settlement of Fleet Marston. It contains all kinds of goodies that you could find in the water 1,700 years ago. Number 6. Apollo 11 Rocket Engines Commonly known as the space mission that put men on the moon, the 1969 launch of Apollo 11 deposited Saturn V F-1 rocket engines into the Atlantic Ocean. A team from Bezos Expeditions, an exploration company owned by Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos, discovered two of the engines in 2012 using deep-sea sonar. They gained a closer look at the engines, which sat 14,000 feet below the water's surface, using remotely operated vehicles, or ROVs, and saw a tangled and time-worn mess of parts strewn on the ocean floor. But there was truly only one way to tell how intact the parts were, to remove them from the water. They hit the ocean at high velocity and have been in salt water for more than 40 years, Bezos said in a statement. On the other hand, they are made of tough stuff, so we'll see. Bezos expeditions recovered components amounting to two of the massive engines in March 2013. 67 Saturn V F1 engines were launched between 1967 and 73, making it the team's next task to verify that the ones they brought to the surface were from Apollo 11 specifically. They confirmed this several months later through the part's extremely worn and barely detectable serial number. But it was there. Number 5. Hilma Hooker Shipwreck On the seafloor off the Caribbean island of Bonaire sits the Hilma Hooker Shipwreck, one of 60 of the region's dive sites, and perhaps the one with the most controversial past. Originally christened as the Midsland in May 1951, the ship changed hands numerous times over the following decades. The 236-foot vessel was a cargo ship that eventually began carrying a very specific type of illicit goods – drugs. It sank once off the Dominican Republic and was raised before eventually becoming the Hilma Hooker in 1979, when the Colombia-based San Andres Import and Export Company purchased it and gave the ship its final moniker. The vessel encountered some sort of mechanical problem, perhaps engine failure or steerage problems, in 1984 off Bonaire. Authorities became suspicious for one reason or another, although the reasons why remain disputed to this day, and they investigated the ship for suspected drug trafficking, only to discover that both the FBI and Interpol had been monitoring the Hilma Hooker for months based on the same suspicions. A false bulkhead was found to contain 25,000 pounds of marijuana, and the ship's crew was arrested. The vessel fell into disrepair as the trial dragged on, and after months of costly maintenance, it sank. 
Government officials foresaw the sinking and moved it to an appropriate, safe area where it would later become a diving site. And it continues being used for this purpose today. Number 4. Underwater Forest in the Gulf of Mexico off the Alabama coast lies an ancient 60,000-year-old cypress forest that once stood on dry land. The trees sprang into existence along the banks of a river at around the same time ancient humans are believed to have started migrating out of Africa. Sediment buried old fallen trees and eventually sea levels rose, engulfing the entire forest, which sat undisturbed until 2004, when Hurricane Ivan disturbed the seabed, revealing its presence in Mobile Bay. Earlier this year, scientists announced that the trees may contain materials that could lead to the development of life-saving medicines. The realization came after divers retrieved samples of the wood back in December 2019 as part of a National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration-funded expedition. The trees were remarkably well-preserved after spending years buried in sediment that prevented oxygen from reaching them and causing them to decay. Scientists removed over 300 organisms from the wood, including a previously undiscovered shipworm species that produced over 100 types of bacteria, many which are new to science and are undergoing DNA analysis to determine their potential medical uses as anti-cancer and pain drugs. A NOAA statement about the discoveries explained that in the past, at least one shipworm-related bacteria showed potential as an antibiotic against parasitic worm infections. Researchers are also investigating the wood's potential usefulness in paper products, renewable fuels, chemicals, animal feeds, and more. Number 3. Strip Club In 2013, a marine biologist named Gil Kuplovitz released photos he took of a forgotten underwater strip club that he discovered while researching off the Israeli coast. Located in Eilat, the venue was originally a submerged restaurant called the Red Sea Star that was later repurposed as an erotic dancing establishment. The building's entrance is above water and took visitors across a 230-foot bridge and down a flight of stairs, Kuplovitz told the Huffington Post, although he was unsure when Nymphus Show Bar, as it was called, shuttered its doors. He snapped photos of the interior through the rusting venue's glass windows, showing a stripper pole that acted as a centerpiece and was once surrounded by tables and chairs that have since been removed. Curiously, very little information is available online about the Nymphus show bar, other than the details Koplovitz offered after conducting his own investigation into the establishment. All signs point to it having been the only underwater strip club that ever existed. Number 2. Ocean Atlas Sculpture The world's largest underwater sculpture, Ocean Atlas, sits at the bottom of the sea off Nassau in the Bahamas. Installed in 2014, the artwork depicts a girl carrying the weight of the ocean, implicitly referencing the Greek myth of Atlas, who bore the weight of the world on his shoulders. Measuring 16 feet tall and weighing over 66 tons, the massive sculpture was assembled piece by piece at its current location. Sculptor Jason DeCares Taylor designed, built, and engineered the submerged statue, which is made from pH-neutral materials and will remain recognizable even after it's taken over by marine wildlife as an artificial coral reef. Ocean Atlas not only gives ocean species a desperately needed new place to live, it helps to draw tourists away from natural coral reefs, which currently suffer from the effects of various human activities, including over-visiting. Jason DeCares Taylor's website sums up the sculpture's meaning, stating, With our oceans and coral reefs facing collapse from numerous threats including overfishing, habitat loss, ocean acidification, global warming and water pollution, the piece symbolizes the burden we are currently asking future generations to carry and the collective responsibility we must accept to prevent its collapse. Number 1. Miskovich Emeralds Hoax Hoping to cash in on the value of shipwrecked gems after plummeting into financial ruin following the onset of the 2008 Great Recession, American diver and businessman Jay Miskovich concocted a plan to discover, quote-unquote, a 154-pound hoard of emeralds off the Florida coast. The deceptive scheme, which was carried out in 2010, involved planting the gems near Key West and finding the treasure later on. This would be a great episode of American Greed, right? Or maybe they already did it. Miskovich convinced several companies to financially back the salvage of the gems while keeping the phony discovery hidden from the public due to the confusing and hotly contested nature of marine salvage laws. 
As soon as word leaked about the emeralds, numerous experts doubted the authenticity of Miskovich's claims, calling for a deeper look into his credibility, especially since the treasure was deposited and found at a site that is not connected with any known shipwrecks and contains no evidence of one. Should have done more research. Amid several lawsuits against Miskovich asserting rightful ownership of the jewels, as well as growing suspicions that the discovery was faked, Miskovich couldn't take the pressure and committed suicide in 2013, leaving the emeralds in a legal limbo of sorts, with undetermined ownership. In 2014, it was discovered that the gems were coated in a modern epoxy, debunking the man's claims that they were shipwrecked treasure. With Miskovich out of the picture, the jewelry stores that sold him the uncut emeralds bore the brunt of the blame for withholding information that would have revealed the jewel's phony shipwrecked status. Thanks for watching! Can you believe the emerald hoax? That's pretty crazy, right? Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and click that notification bell so you never miss an upload. See you next time! Bye!